Minsk and Boo have returned, traveling the land and kicking butt for goodness, as Minsk would say. Today, we're going to look at Minsk and Boo's Journal of Villainy from the DMs Guild. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the DM Toolbox. I am Joe. Before we get started today, as always, don't forget to go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel and help me out. Don't forget, we are still doing a giveaway of 5th Edition Foes, the monster book from Necromancer Games, also known as Frog God Games. I'll be giving that away when we hit 500 subscribers, so make sure if you haven't subscribed yet, do so and keep an eye out for that giveaway. Additionally, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Toolbox underscore DM, where I'll let you know about upcoming videos and other topics, as well as you can follow me on TikTok at DM Toolbox there. Okay, let's look at this new book. Now, I normally cover third party content, uh, but I do want to start getting more into the DM skill content as well, because most of that is made by non Wizards to the Coast people, uh, but people who are super talented and contribute a lot to the game. However, this book is technically put out by Wizards of the Coast, but it's popular right now. A lot of people are liking this book, and I thought I'd show it to you because I bought a physical copy of it. It's print-on-demand, so you actually have to go to the DMs Guild and choose the print-on-demand option to have this book printed and made, but you can always just get the PDF. But I like having physical books, so I went ahead and ordered it, and I thought it'd be nice to show you guys the physical copy of the book as well. So... Uh, this book, uh, I really haven't cracked into the physical book much other than just a quick glance. But first thing I noticed is the binding is nice and tight. It's a, it's a hard spine uh, to open. I mean, it's that's good. It's tight. But you can definitely feel uh, how well they actually made it. Um, unlike some of the third party uh, publishers, uh, but much like most of the Witcher of the Coast books, uh, the binding is like all the pages are... Uh, kind of slitted and glued as opposed to when they do like the sections. Um, so I think Wizards of the Coast binding in general is a little weaker than a lot what you see at a lot of third party publishers, but it still looks like a really nice book. It's not huge. Uh, it is only about a, a little over 150 pages. Um, and for the price you're going to pay for the print on demand, that's not a great value. Um, so, you know, the PDF may be a better way to go unless you're like me, you just have to have physical copies. Uh, I will say the book itself is pretty cool, especially some of this artwork. Check this out. I love this. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's you know, really well made. And the, the art itself in the book is fantastic, as it usually is in a lot of these 5th edition books. I really like the art style of 5th edition. It's grown on me. Uh, I'm a big fan of the second, a uh, uh, big fan of the second edition artwork. Um, but 5th edition artwork has definitely come to, um, the point where I just enjoyed immensely. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool stuff in here. Uh, a lot of art in here, actually. A lot of art in this book. So for a 150 page book with all this art, um, it's, you know, uh, I guess you, you're getting less content and more art, which depending on how you look at it is good or bad. But I'm always a fan of really great artwork. Uh, the book itself, let's look at the book itself. So uh, what this book does is it's definitely based in forgotten realms right uh i mean it's forgotten realms book minsk and boo are from the forgotten realms mainly the boulder's gate you know area um so this book is supposed to be their journal of their exploits and stuff like that kind of deal but what this book really i think is for is definitely for dungeon masters to help uh enhance your game enhance your campaigns a little bit and i think it does a decent job of that there's a few things i wish this book has that it doesn't but we'll get into that. Um, the first thing that I really like about this book is actually the very first section, the introduction, which is called Heroic Stories. And what this is basically telling us about is the Hero's Quest, uh, which is a very, you know, a lot of DMs probably know this, uh, you know, George Lucas used uh, this method in Star Wars and they even give Star Wars and they give Harry Potter uh, both as examples, they give uh, Frodo from Lord of the Rings as an example of what the hero's quest looks like, where, you know, you start off in your hometown, your hometown is threatened by some kind of, you know, disaster or thing. Um, a, uh, a a mentor of sorts, our Obi-Wan Kenobi or our Gandalf or our Dumbledore, 
uh, set our hero on his quest and teach him. And then he eventually faces that final villain, his Darth Vader, his Sauron, his um, Voldemort, right? So uh, that's kind of the, the whole hero's journey. And it does talk about that a little, which is good. It's a very good thing for a DM to keep in mind. There's a book about it that everybody should read, but uh, it's it's a nice little introduction. Uh, then they talk about a few other things. And they talk about patrons, which are talked about in other books as well. I think uh, Tasha's. Uh, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. Like, what is a patron? Why do we use a patron? Well, what is what are the benefits of a patron, right? Um, the patron is generally going to be kind of our Gandalf here, right? Um, that's going to set us on our quest. Uh, they have contacts. Gandalf knows people all over Middle Earth. So uh, using our patron's contacts can be helpful. Maybe they, uh, they know a wizard that can give us a portal to somewhere. Maybe they know a merchant in a town that can hook us up with some gear. Um, but they talk about that stuff, right? Uh, you know, the missions they go on, who is the patron's enemy generally becomes our enemy as well. Um, and so it kind of gets into that a little bit. It also, it kind of, I kind of breezed over this, but it talks about hometowns. So your hometown is generally where you're going to start your campaign. It's your base of operations. And it, it one thing I, I feel, and I don't know if it, it really touches on this well in this book, but it really nice if the players care about their hometown. If you, for instance, watched uh, the first campaign of Critical Role, um, we didn't see their early days of their game, but Amon became kind of their main uh, town. That's where they had their their castle, Grayskull, and they had saved the town. They had become part of the council, and and it became this important place to them. So, spoiler alert: if you haven't watched Campaign One and you plan to, you might want to skip over the next couple seconds here. But when the dragons came and hit Amon, it was devastating. And it really set them out onto that whole big story arc. So that is a really good example of why a hometown can be important. Because if it's threatened, it really gives the players motivation. Uh, one thing I've talked about before is creating an NPC together. Uh, having the party in the session zero helped create an NPC to care about and then do something bad to that NPC. Be it uh, kill them off or kidnap them, make them sick. Whatever it is, if some, if they've helped to create that character and something bad happens to it, it's a good motivating tool. You could do the same with a town, especially in a homebrew. Um, you know, help, have them help create aspects of that town. Or even if they're you're starting in Boulder's Gate, maybe have an inn that they created and they named and it's an important place. Have them create a few people in that town that they care about together, you know. Um, write it into their backstory because then when you threaten that thing, it means more to the players if they've helped to create that. So hometowns uh, can be a really cool thing. And, you know, one of my games, I actually had my players create, you know, it was a whole homebrew world and it was a new world. So I didn't create a lot of stuff and I let it organically grow with my players. So one of my players was a cleric. I'm like, who's your God? He goes, well, who are the gods in your world? I go, I don't know. Create one. And he did. So he cared about that. And then he had, there was a temple to that God in the town and he cared about that. So doing things like that, letting your players create aspects of your game of your world and you roll with it is definitely a cool thing to do uh the other thing this book goes into is um it's going to go into the villains themselves so it talks about who you know what the villains are what they do why are they the villain and then their henchmen what are the villains goals where the villains henchmen um you know generally think of the henchmen not as uh you know your your nameless red shirts as opposed to the mini bosses, right? There's going to be their, their kind of, um, their lieutenants. Those are the henchmen we're talking about here. So they're going to send their, their main lieutenants, their main henchmen out. Those henchmen are going to have their, their red shirts working for them. But we want to see those henchmen, um, as, uh, Easter egg or things that are leading up to the big boss. And maybe they find a note from the big bad boss. Maybe they, you get a, a, a you know, an appearance from him somewhere or a clue left by him and you start feeding into later on into the game, the villain starts to make more appearances, starts talking to players a little bit, but we don't really get into the villain proper till towards the end of the campaign. The henchmen are those, those early bosses, those low level bosses, right? Um, so that's kind of an overview of, of the first chapter, which is basically giving an overview of the whole book. Uh, they have a couple tables here, um, which are going to cover our random hometown, random group patron and random villain. Now the hometowns they give here are established towns 
within the Forgotten Realms, like Boulder's Gate. So right here, the, the hometown section is definitely very Forgotten Realms. Now, as far as uh, the patrons, um, some of them are kind of Boulder's Gate uh, with a little name changing. I mean, even with the towns, right? We can change Boulder's Gate name to fit another setting or our own homebrew. Um, but like for the patrons, they have things like the Harpers, the Flaming Fist, the Emerald Conclave. These are all pretty well established Forgotten Realms things. So uh, they also have some Candlekeep stuff here. So um, if you're playing Forgotten Realms, really good resource. If you're not, it's going to take a little DM creativity to use some of that stuff. Um, then it goes into the villains. Again, uh, yes, these villains are, again, Forgotten Realms, like Ball or, or um, uh Sestam and, and you know there's there's a few here they give us six but they are uh again ones that could easily since they a lot of them are like demon lord or something easily used in other campaigns easily just rename them if you wanted to so a lot easier i think to reuse the villains and then they actually have uh they're, they're gonna go into henchmen which very easily uh use in any campaign which i love so um this book's definitely much easier if you're playing forgotten realms however uh you can use it pretty well anywhere. So I just want to show you here uh, one cool thing. So I'm going to go into uh, hometowns here and we're going to look, I want to look at Boulder's Gate because that one's one that everybody kind of is more familiar with. So Boulder's Gate, let me give us a nice little overview on Boulder's Gate. I feel like this book is almost like a really good add-on to uh, the, the uh, Sword Coast book. Um, so we get a map of Boulder's Gate. We get information about pinpoints within the city um i don't know if we've really had a good updated boulder's gate map or not well i guess we did we because we had uh uh descent to avernus so uh but this does give some really good information on boulder's gate proper uh it gives us some random encounters it gives us shops uh it gives us all sorts of stuff about the the city so it does this for all you know all uh what is it four cities uh, that they give us or four hometowns that they give us um we get into the patron section of the book um definitely useful here and let's see here so again uh they give us a lot of information they tell us about perks of that uh for instance the adventurers guild what are the perks of being in the guild what are some guild quests we can go on who are important people within the guild um so again super super useful information and again uh this is something like the adventurers guild that's generic enough we can throw that anywhere um so yeah uh i think it's it's kind of helpful now if you're gonna be playing candle keep or something like that there is candle keep as a patron so you can kind of take the candle keep campaign book and uh you know maybe continue on from that with some information that's in here uh we also get into our uh our campaign villains which uh we're gonna go get into more detail here on those so they give us um information on villains and stat blocks you know, uh, not much we don't already know and have, uh, but it is still a little bit of extra information. Uh, so this one, yeah, cool. There are a few new ones, right? Um, but it, it's it's fairly basic. Here's a big bad guy and here's a stack block. Um, the henchman section is probably my favorite section because these are not really people that we would know and we can easily drop a lot of these into uh other places uh, so kind of cool now one thing i just noticed i hadn't noticed this earlier is the first um uh person here is uh erebeth de uh telemaran um Eberth was once an elven paladin of tear the blind god of justice so she was kind of our patron if you ever played the video game neverwinter nights so i'm guessing uh something bad happened to her at some point that i don't know about and you can use her as a henchman now. So this section is kind of cool though, because these could easily be plugged into other games. And again, with a quick name change, if or you know a change of a location or something that they're from, uh, you can easily reuse a lot of these. So I think it's a pretty cool book. Then in the back we do have some you know new monster stat blocks. So um, not a ton, but a few. So, I mean, overall, I think that this is a, a pretty handy book. I think it gives some good inspiration for DM. I think if you're playing in Forgotten Realms, very easy to use. If you're not, you just got to be a creative DM and you can really reuse a lot of this stuff. I think uh, the, the, 
the town cities one might be the hardest one to reuse because uh, here's a map of a city from Forgotten Realms. It's hard to to reuse that, but you, you can if you wanted to, right? Uh, but everything else I think is pretty well uh, reusable. Um, and like I said, the henchman section is probably my favorite section of the book, along with the introduction, which is just some really reminders and inspirational stuff for, for a dungeon master. So pretty cool book. Uh, I would definitely at least pick it up on PDF. Um, but like I said, if you want to get the Prince on Demand, I wish I could remember the price off the top of my head. Uh, a little expensive for a book of this size, though. Um, you know, your your most of your uh, fifth edition books, I think, are probably a little over 200 to 300 page range, where this is only about 150. And you're paying about the same price. So up to you guys. But it is a cool book. It's a cool cover. I love Minsk and Boo. They are awesome. Uh, and I love all the little notes from Minsk throughout uh, the book, which I think is kind of a, just, you know, that fun flavor. So definitely worth checking out at the very least, guys. Uh, I'm hoping to bring you guys more DMs Guild content in the future. Uh, I know I cover a lot of Cobalt Press and Nord and stuff like that, which is some of my favorite stuff. But the DMs Guild is such a, a wealth of awesome content out there. Some of my favorite writers write on the DMs Guild. So I definitely want to bring you more of that stuff and I plan to. So stick around for that. I hope to do some more. Let me know if you've looked at Minsk and Boo's Journal of Villainy, what you guys think of it. Is it something you're using? Um, and you know, what kind of use are you getting at it? How are you using your games? Let me know down below in the comments. And until next time, roll those dice.